I know there's a lot of young guys out there that are maybe thinking about a career in the business and uh, maybe they ask questions of, as far as if there's any advice uh, certain people that have been in the business that they could give them. And uh, I remember one time I read in a, uh, an interview in a bass player magazine, I think it was in an English uh, bass player magazine, and they asked the bass player uh, uh, who was from Nashville, what kind of advice do you have to the younger, younger uh, bass players uh, that want to come to Nashville? What, what would you tell them? And he said, don't come. And when I read it, I said, whoa, really? Yeah, don't come. You know, now for me, I couldn't tell a, a, a young, inspiring bass player or any kind of musician that not to come. The only thing I could tell you is to satisfy your soul and follow your heart. And if you feel that's what you want to do, you do it. Because I'll tell you, if you feel that somewhere down the line, after, you, after you've uh, made a move, whether it was Nashville, LA, or New York, wherever you move to some kind of, uh, to pursue your uh, recording or with a group, your, your musical career, and you'll, know, you'll know in your heart uh, whether that's the right place for you or whether you feel comfortable around, around the musicians. And if you don't come, 10 years from now, you might kick yourself in the butt and don't sleep at nights because you're thinking, well, why didn't I go? Why didn't I go to Nashville? Why didn't I go to LA? How come I didn't go to New York? So satisfy your soul, that's real important. Meet as many musicians as you can, play live with them. Uh, that's what's one of the great, greatest experience that uh, you can have. And the other thing about that is you meet people that are uh, other musicians that are also inspiring musicians that are uh, hoping to further their uh, career in music. And maybe they'll be the people that one day recommends you somewhere where you where you where you can go uh and find uh you know something uh, on your on your road there there is one thing to remember though uh that's probably more important naturally you have to have the ability when i start first started in uh in detroit and uh i don't, I don't even want to tell you guys what year it was <laughs> it's, it's it's a ways back but I, I called, I was fortunate, and, and you have to be at the right places at the right time, that there's some luck involved. And, but uh, I started playing with some local musicians in some clubs, and I got in an instrumental group uh, that had some hits. And then that same group, uh, the name of that group at that time was called the Royal Tones. They became a backup band for uh, uh, quite a few artists out of Detroit, uh, one in particular was in the, this was actually in the middle 60s, was a Del Shannon. So I started playing on records that were more pop records, but I always listened to R&B, or what they called at that time, uh, race music. And there was only a few stations where you could hear that. But uh, uh, even when I was started playing upright, I uh, would turn on the radio and I would play play with those songs and uh, to try to I was just into that that type of music, but also I was found myself playing with these pop artists where it was more a rock and roll sound and uh, maybe even a little different different sound and and the feel. But uh, I guess what I want to say is uh, what I'm leading to is. If you really love your music and you have aspirations to be a studio musician or a, a, a work in a, a TV shows or Broadway shows or, or, or a self-contained group, you have, you have to think about the proper things you need to prepare yourself to, to go in one of those directions. You know, you may have to learn how to read. School is great. 
you can go to, uh, I know people that go to Ber Berkeley and, and they play their butts off. But you have to remember that if you're playing for records or you're playing for a group, you have to play for the song. If somebody comes and says to you, well, I want you to play a solo over here. Okay, you do it. You play the solo. But now you, you have a situation out there now where a lot of guys, it seems like they're, they, they're uh, trying to impress people so they're showing their chops off. It's hard for them. play blues or something, they've got to be. I don't know, I don't get it, but I, if, if I, what I feel is, is about that is this. I have seen musicians like that, and I don't recommend it to, to anybody unless they, they have the gift of not only knowing how to play you just can't play scales i mean you have to have the feel and if you're going to play a scale it has to be played within the context of the tune you know i've been playing for years and there's some people i listen to and i still can't relate to them but when i feel somebody and i don't care how many notes he's playing i i can relate to him i can relate to him so you have to be careful if you're going to want to pursue that and most most uh, bass players uh, uh, they need to think for me my thoughts are they need to think about uh, the groove and there'll be time for your solos but I don't think your solos are going to get you a job playing for uh, if it's country uh, for Keith Urban or uh, or Taylor Swift, or uh, I don't even think if you were going to get a job playing for somebody like Beyonce, or recording on uh, film tracks, uh, uh, it's it's not about that. It, the the basic foundation uh, is real important, and that should be what you concentrate on. As far as if you really want to work, and the more styles you play, the better.